Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, so to speak. Um, we are here today and tonight, I should say, and we're so excited to um, be here and say hello to uh, Kevin Lee and be able to talk to him today. Hi, Kevin. Hi, dear. Hi, De Debbie and Andy. Great to see you guys. Now we've had hey, Kevin, Kevin on. We've had Kevin on before, and that was like one of our greatest shows ever. So he was so nice to come back. And this time we're going to talk about um, spirit communication. And so that's going to be really, really interesting. But first, I do want to say hi to Andy. Hi, Andy. Hey, Debbie. Uh, how are you doing? Um, this week has been challenging and then... Um, some truths have been revealed today. So I think all of this, because I, I just um, found out that my my job that I'm at, my uh, employment ended on Friday. So in like two days. And then I was just really worried. So I've been applying and everything. Well, come to find out. The manager is talking to another one and they can just move me into another department. Wow. The hours would be different, but mm -hmm. this would give me time. So uh -huh. oh, that's days, great. Yeah, three days notice was kind of like, oh, I was ready to pull my hair out. Mm -hmm. Um, but that comes with temp, you know, temp jobs. So yeah. Oh but my goodness. You've been busy. Right. But anyway, that is that is great because I know that you and I've talked that before. You really love that job. So you're mm -hmm. going to manifest it and bring that in, you know, and go back to that one. Yeah, you will. Good things are coming for everybody. It's 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 there, you guys. Um, yes, I've been super busy, mostly with readings. And I have a little announcement for you, Andy. Um, but I. Um, I'm kind of starting a new venture. I'm going to start doing moon rituals with some people. But oh, yeah. Lena just told me, Andy, that we just got the okay to investigate the four-story the theater, downtown San Diego, the 10th Avenue Art Center. And that is an Art Deco building that was built in 1910. And we're going to be doing ghost tours. And then guess what? that Jeff, thank you, Jeff, um, is giving us the keys for three days. And we will be doing oh, investigations wow. and locking people down on Halloween. Just wow, like last fun. year. <laughs> and it's such a great building. It's super haunted, you guys. And the way that they were doing the ghost tours is they wanted us to kind of memorize where the ghost was, that, where that person died and what the name of the ghost is and all this stuff. And I walked in and I said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, because there's full of ghosts here and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to, you know, go see everything. And I'm going to tell you what I see. I had the best time doing those ghost tours that I sat down and did impromptu seances we had a good time. People were falling off their chairs when they got information. It was really great. So we're going to be doing that. And we'll announce that for anybody who's in Southern California and San Diego. Very fun. It's going to be fun. It is. It's going to be great. That and awesome. it's, you, That building is all original except for when you walk in the door, those original doors that were always unlocked 24-7 and wow. yeah, at, when it was built because it was a church. And wow. The stipulation was they would never be locked. They were open for the military to come in. And, you know, so they could come and pray. And so it has a lot of history. And the only thing they changed was downstairs, you know, the the bathroom. And everything else, you walk in, it's just like going in the past the stained glass windows. It's creepy as all get out. And it's super haunted. And um, I told the story, you guys, you'd have to go way back and look at one of our shows. Whereas first thing I did when I went in is said, I got a hat man in the basement mm -hmm. and we did find him literally. It was, am it was amazing, but that's another time because we have lots of stuff we can get to and talk to. We we've got you, Kevin. So we Wonderful. can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So good things are going on and I'm just really uh, know that good things are going to happen for all of us. 
It's great. Now, Kevin, yes. you have the most interesting background ever. Mm -hmm. You know, we love you instantly mm -hmm. when we met you. And you've been all around the world and you, you've got mm -hmm. all this education and this experience mm -hmm. and the seances and everything. Yeah, and did you want to tell, since we have a new audience now, a little bit about you? Sure. All right. Well, it's wonderful to be back with you guys, Andy and Debbie, and with all of your listeners and viewers. And and I will tell you, this: I have only been on this journey for probably 11 years because I, I stumbled upon my church, uh, which was a tiny, literally a tiny church in just south of Fort Lauderdale. Probably it was summer. It was June of 2007. And I, and I really didn't even know what the word metaphysics was. And once I began attending this church, uh, eventually I found out that they evolved out of the religion of spiritualism, which you all probably know. And uh, spiritualism is, a, is an American religion that began in the mid-1800s and then it spread around the world like wildfire. And so now we have spiritualist in, uh, churches and spiritualist organizations around the world, hundreds and hundreds of them. And I don't know how many followers there are, but there's quite a few. And within about a, I think about a year, I learned about a college in England called the Arthur Findlay College. And that college was where I, that began, that showed me how serious this stuff was because I never really took it for, I took it for granted. I never took it as something professional and legitimate. I just thought, well, it's all so airy fairy, hippy dippy. I don't know if this, all this stuff is real. And when I went to Arthur Findlay, I, I witnessed ministers, healers, psychics, and mediums who had devoted their life to the world of spirit and to serving people. And they did it in such a professional way that I was, I was really shocked. And I, and I realized, well, I, it, it stirred within me that the, the sense of professionalism of, about it because I really wanted to believe it was real and legitimate. And I could see that these people were legitimizing it by their beliefs. And then from there and all my studies and all the travels and to go to go to different centers for different workshops and conferences, you know, in the United States, Canada, uh, Caribbean, Mexico, South America, over into Europe. Uh, I realized that there was much more to this world of metaphysics than just uh, healing, intuition and mediumship. And uh, it, 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 it's amazing because in the last 11 years, everything has transformed incredibly. So now we talk about quantum energies. We talk about uh, multiple dimensions, multiple universes, string theory, all types of uh, fascinating uh, uh, theories and realities. And uh, it, it's just been amazing. Spirit has, I, Spirit guided me to the right jobs. They gave me enough money so that I could go and travel the world to experience these things and then bring those back to my community so that I could grow my church, my metaphysical church, uh, which is called the Metaphysical Chapel of South Florida. And uh, we went from a tiny little church in Dania Beach. We relocated into Fort Lauderdale and we've begun to, in a small way, and I'll say it respectfully, we've kind of cre recreated the Arthur Findlay experience in the sense we're, we're a center of light that people come to from literally all over the world to learn about healing arts, uh, psychic development, and mediumistic development, and also public speaking and, and becoming a minister and, and serving, uh, serving your community. And that's what I found the Arthur Findlay did for me, and I wanted to recreate that in South Florida. And so that's what I've done. That's, uh, that's what I wanted to, to give to my community who couldn't afford to go on all these trips and they couldn't afford to go to all these classes. And uh, so th I think that's just my gift to the world <laughs> is my church, my chapel. And uh, it's, it has totally changed my life. I, 11 years ago, I never would have thought I'd be a minister. Never. I would have bet everything against it. And uh, I've stepped into the role because I see it's a natural part of serving humanity. And I love it. Oh, Wow. That is compassion. Wow. I'm, that is such compassion. And the one thing that got me so much was 11 years. Uh, that's amazing to have such a transformation in all of those experiences and all those places you went. That's amazing. You know, I, I, I think I, you mentioned that I had attended seances. I've attended 
I have to say probably over 300, uh, I haven't counted them all, but I would guess mm -hmm. about 300 seances because that includes healing seances, uh, even very basic psychic seances, and uh, also uh, basic and advanced mediumship seances where we're trying to communicate with spirit in other dimensions and they with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, easily, I would say easily three seances a month for 10 years really pushes the limits of over 300. Wow. No. Andy, we need to go there. You got yeah. it. Wouldn't it be so cool? <laughs> I would love it. We need we, to visit. We can, go, we can go to the beach in the day, and then you guys can go to a seance sure. at night. Oh, that would be so great. Um, when I grew up, and you know that I grew up in a spiritualist church. My family worked at the, um, at the facility. And so I remember my first seance. I was really... I went in like everything's great, but I really got scared. <laughs> I would, I don't get scared anymore, but you know, it was just something unknown. And um, we did have one thing, a couple things happen. And one was this booming voice came out of this elderly woman and it was a man's voice, like an Indian. Uh -huh. And yeah, that was a trip because we're like, uh, what? Like she's what? 85. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, so it was a little scary if you haven't been to it before. I know. I know. I know there's a lot of people out there that go, oh, I don't know if I want to go, but um, yes. it's so interesting. It, it really is. It's life changing. Yeah. And that's what I love about all of it. I remind, you know, we, we often say as spiritualists, it's not about the entertainment factor, but it's about yeah. the, the, well, it is about the professionalism, especially, but it's about the, the evidence of life after death in that communication mm -hmm. from the higher realms that comes mm -hmm. through in such a way, this elegant philosophy that it reminds me as though I'm mentally tippy-toeing to grasp the words, make the sentences in my mind, and then process what I'm hearing. And that's when you know it's of the highest vibration. Right. That's and it's, it's so wonderful, too, to actually... The, there's nothing better, really, when you have someone that's grieving and you can tell them something that's validated, something Absolutely. that they could only know, and then tell them that their loved one is okay. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's healing. And, you know, I tell everyone, uh, it, it, everything we do, whether we're healers, psychics, whether we are ministers or mediums, at the core of everything we do is healing. And mm -hmm. our messages are healing. The evidence is healing. The phenomena can be healing. The uh, the work, the energy can be healing. Even the spoken word on a Sunday morning can be healing and transforming. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. all healing, which is the vibration of love. Isn't that true, though? Because really, even, even the kind words, mm -hmm. when people are having a really hard day Absolutely. and they get a kind word. I do hear myself, Andy, a little bit. Oh, um, everybody's got earbuds in, right? <laughs> it's not that bad, though. Yeah, yeah. So I'm good. I got I'll earbuds. be okay. All right, um, Kevin. We have some of the frequently asked questions for for you that mm -hmm. I think that everybody will want to know. Kind of give an idea mm -hmm. of how this all flows about spirit communication. Okay. So. Okay, if you don't mind answering some questions. Mm, and perfect. also, anybody in the audience and the viewers, if you have a question for Kevin, uh, Andy can see it and post it, okay? But uh, Kevin, um, okay, this is like really basic. Mm. Is spirit communication a real thing? Okay, well, uh, we wouldn't be having this video if it wasn't. But, uh, well, actually, we can talk about the opposite. But anyway, I will say yeah, absolutely it is. And let me say why, because uh, uh, coming into this, even myself, just 11 years ago, I did not, I was a skeptic. And to a degree, I'm a healthy skeptic even today. But for the average person coming in, they do find it hard to believe that there can be active communication from one dimension to another. But let me say this. This phenomena of spirit communication has been going back thousands of years. I don't know how many, probably tens of thousands. And in recorded record through uh, different religious texts from different parts of the world, we know that it's been taking place because there are scriptures written about it in all of the holy books. 
uh, of the Bhagavad Gita, the Torah, the Quran, the Bible, all these different books, even the Book of Mormon. And so what we have is we have these prophets of old who received spirit communication through divine revelation, right? So that would be through uh, almost a, a trance state, an altered state of mind. That it, it could have been through clear cognizance where they just simply knew the information that was being directed to them by spirit. Uh, and in these different holy scriptures, they talk about how that information comes through divine revelation. Okay, so today we call that trans channeling. Okay, and the old word that they used in all of, a lot of the scriptures was prophet. And what is the new word that we use today? Medium, right? So uh, when we think about that, the prophets were listening to spirit speaking and uh, bringing forward phenomena, physical phenomena, many times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were guiding them. So they sh these prophets, these mediums, were sharing higher truth from spirit to the people in their cultures. And it's been recorded in every single world religion. So that's how I would say, uh, if you want to look at it evidentially uh, and look at it from an academic standpoint or scientific standpoint, you look at the holy scriptures of all religions. Why are they saying and doing the same thing? Because mm -hmm. it was happening. And even we know the scientists of today have proven over the last 200 years, they've been proving spirit communication takes place. Our spiritualist mediums are our metaphysical mediums, even our spiritist mediums, those who follow the teachings of Alan Kardec, uh, they, uh, they all demonstrate the evidence of spirit communication every single day, probably every single hour uh, of the week, because in different places of the world, you have all of these individuals. So I would say, yes, absolutely it is. Wow. Well, I agree, too. We totally are doing that all the time. So we know it's real. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, now you use the word medium, but not psychic. So mm -hmm. what's the difference with that? Oh, well, that's a good question. Okay. So uh, I specifically chose my word medium uh, for the old word prophet because uh, medium implies someone who is the intermediary, the middleman, the middle woman, the instrument between two minds. And so let me start this away. Psychics connect energetically with individuals, with things, with locations. Say, for instance, the building in uh, San Diego that you're going to be in, there will be so much psychic energy in that, in that building from uh, the last 50 to 75 years it's been around. And so there are uh, soul emanations or psychic emanations emanating from the building that it's absorbed them, okay? All of the good emotions, bad emotions, heartbreaks, and whatnot achievements. So psychics connect uh, soul to soul and mediums will connect mind to mind. So there, it's the medium's mind to the spirit's mind. And that's what we call telepathic communication, mind to mind communication. So uh, another thing to think about is not, uh, not all psychics are mediums because they need to have not only training or the, the natural ability of, of developing into a medium, but uh, all mediums by definition must be psychic. So when you're out there looking for someone who can help you with spirit communication so that you can contact your loved ones, try to find one that uses the terminology medium, identifies themselves as a medium, a spiritual medium, and not a pure psychic, if you will. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, fun, and, you know, I got, I'm laughing to myself a little bit because for some reason, as you're talking, I'm hearing your words before you say them. I and I'm it. like, whoa, <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm psychic medium. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, can any, well, we kind of said it, can anybody be a medium? Well, let me say this. Absolutely everyone has the potential of being a medium, but think of it this way. Uh, most people are so busy and, and their lives are so distracted by Facebook, Instagram, the latest movies, their, their hobbies, life in general, family dramas, work dramas, whatnot. Most everyone can develop, but few will because it takes so much time and so much dedication. That's the one thing that you'll find on this path. It's not something that you can just go take a weekend course and develop. Right. Although, yes, you can unfold to a degree and begin the process of awakening. 
uh, over the course of one or two or three classes. You, it, it's more a trust of what's already with inside you. And I will say that I love to I love to share this example with my students. And I say it like this. Everyone can play a piano. OK, as long as you have fingers or as long as you have an instrument on the body to press the keys, you can play a piano. But what, there's an there's a potential within the individual. Maybe that person was born as a child prodigy. So they have tremendous potential that comes from previous lives. And, and the next child could be born and trained to an expert level of piano, uh, a piano playing. The next child could could develop to a, a fairly good level of development to play the piano. And then maybe even another child has a disability that prevents them from playing because of mental inca uh, the incapacity of the mental sta state. So uh, everyone has potential. Will they develop it? Not everyone, very few will. Uh, some people have more potentials than the other. And that's why it seems like some people just, when they grab a, a, a deck of tarot cards, they just naturally fall into the rhythm. And other people struggle for a year or two to get into that rhythm. And uh, some people just have more potential than the next. That's what we have to think about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you did hit on one thing that's kind of, for me, I just kind of wince, is that right now there's so many people going to classes and they're actually like taking one class and getting a certificate yes, and I then like they get that. to hang it on the wall. Yes, that's right. <laughs> very unprofessional, very highly unethical and highly selfish. Let me say that. It don't, you know, let me say it so that they don't come after you for saying it. Um, but <laughs> you know, that's really true. Actually, I talk about that because uh, there have been conferences when I went to teach the principles of ethics and professionalism. I was asked not to teach it at the conference and because I wouldn't change my topic to teach basic mediumship, I was removed from the conference. And because they felt it wasn't what people needed to hear or wanted to hear. And I thought that was very inappropriate. And that I will say is another thing I learned at the Arthur Finley College is the ethics, the professionalism and uh, the morality of the work of being a psychic, a healer, a medium, even just a servant of people you cannot just go and take a weekend class and then hang a shingle that you're an internationally recognized uh, medium right. or healer yeah. or psychic. Because I was on this show called Psychic Fixes for one episode, that doesn't, just because it goes globally, doesn't make you an international medium. Right. But people are very uh, driven to compete and label themselves in such a way that it gives them the recognition. Honestly, they haven't earned. And mm -hmm. I think people need to be a lot, I'm very honest with my students. Uh, I will call them out and even publicly if I catch them uh, being inappropriate with their titles uh, because I, they've learned in my classes that that's not acceptable. Oh, I so agree with you. Uh -huh. I really do because I see it all the time uh -huh. where people are especially calling themselves international, you know, uh, uh -huh. readers or psychics or whatever. And I do read for people all over the world. I can prove that. And I've been doing it for uh, five years. And so, um, you know, it's really hard when they, uh, so many times here in Southern California, I'm seeing these one day classes or, yeah. you know, instant all, mediumship. <laughs> you know, let me say this to your listeners and your viewers, because I think this is important. When we are serving, uh, being the ministering, uh, the medium or the healer, the psychic that's serving the public, whether privately or publicly, that, that five or even 10 seconds of a message can do five years of therapeutic damage where they will need a therapist, where they could lose financial wealth. They could be redirected to uh, a job that is not right for them because you have so called yourself an international healer, psychic medium. And, uh, and truly, you you have the potential to change people's lives so dramatically, it could be considered in a court of law injurious. And that's something that, that I teach my students about the legalities of the work also. And so it, you have to be very careful in when you work with the people in the public setting, uh, you have to be connected to spirit or you have to be connected to the energy psychically strongly. Yeah. You cannot misrepresent things just because you have a hunch or just because you need to be certain. And uh, your words, unfortunately, with all the recording technology, it can be used against you really easily. So um, 
you know, uh, I always tell my students, be so careful how you say things. You can bring a negative message to an audience member, but you better wrap it in a ribbon of love and leave them feeling uplifted. Don't leave them hopeless or they could potentially go and if they require therapeutic counseling, technically in a court of law, that's meant as um, uh, I can't think of the word, but it, because they require therapy, it could become considered injurious. Mm -hmm. I know. I know when I teach, I really am watching to make sure there's validation because I'm that's the biggest thing I'm about is validation. We want to make sure that we are getting the messages from spirit to the people. And so, you know, we're out checking on that all the time. So thank you for bringing well for answering and continuing with my question, because I think that's really important. Um, now, we talked about mediumship. So like. How can you teach someone or how do people become a medium? Well, you know, there are so many organizations around the world. There's this, the, the, uh, can't think of all their names off the top of my head, but there are spiritualist organizations, metaphysical organizations, spiritist organizations. Uh, there are different, uh, centers in, in the United States, uh, probably some that people know the Omega Center or, uh, uh Kripalu and these are in the New England area. Uh, there's also the United Metaphysical Churches, which I evolved out of. I went to that seminary program where I, we train, we certify and train for three years just to become a certified oh medium. Goodness. And wow. uh, there's also a, a program at the United Metaphysical Churches for about a year and a half of development work on campus and also at local churches to become a spiritual healer. So it's about a year and a half pro process to become certified. And, uh, and also to become a, uh, an ordained minister, it's a four-year process. So it's, that organization is quite involved. And they, they ordain, they license, they certify, and they are very serious about the work. And that's what I like about my organization, the United Metaphysical Churches. Now, I will also say there is a center that I, I love to give props to because they took all of my bad habits and they cleaned them up. And that's called the Inner Spiritual Center and that's in Fairfield, New Jersey. And uh, the, the founders, Bill Collar and Sharon Subas, do a fabulous job uh, working with individuals who want to unfold their mediumistic abilities. They have a two year, what we, I think they might even call it an international training program because you work with students on, uh, in Europe in different places uh, remotely through the internet. And we do that during the class weekends and we, we do that during events. So you get that experience of international exposure and working with different audiences. That was interesting, but it was so they broke me down to the basics and made me start from the beginning. And it was a two year process. I had to fly up there five times per year for two oh, years. Goodness. And that was about every two or three months I was back in New Jersey. And I have taken a lot of mediumship programs uh, and I have to say it probably is the best program I've ever taken. It was worth the money, the sacrifice, and it, it literally made me a much higher, higher quality stage medium, a platform medium. And uh, it made me a professional. I really feel like it did. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's really great to get into a really reputable place yep. and really learn and be educated towards this. Then. So that's and good to know. And there's good um, books there too. Okay. And you, Debbie, you may have the book. I don't have it on my library shelf, but it's called So You Want to Be a Medium. Oh. Right? It's a yeah. classic. It's, I believe it's I a, have it. a green book. That's a, I, I always tell my students to buy that book. There's also a lady who has uh, created a beautiful book. It's a workbook series, a very thick workbook, and her name is Sharon Klingler. She's out of Lilydale. And uh, her book is so in-depth with so many exercises, CDs, workbook pages that is a wonderful study at home program that i highly recommend people also it's not cheap but you get what you pay for wonderful do you know the name of that uh yes i do let's see i have it right here yes see i must be psychic i knew where it was okay advanced spirit communication and public mediumship by sharon Klingler. And it looks like this. See if we can get that up to the, the camera. Oh, okay. Got it. 
Good. I'll put a I'll put a uh, link to that uh, to these two Wonderful. books. Uh, you know when we upload this, that's great. But I think what people also want to know something like, uh, what's it like when spirit speaks to uh, a medium? That's a very good question because a lot of times. Uh, most people think that spirit uh, either stands uh, that that we see them as physical beings standing next to their loved ones in the audience, or or standing next to my client in the chair if it's a private reading. And uh, it, it can happen that way, but for me, let me start off with me. From my perspective, it reminds me of a memory. If I think of my grandmother who's gone to spirit, I can see her on that porch in Texas. I can smell her cooking in the house because I remember how the house smelled, the, that old cedar wood and, and the, the damp earth around it in her garden. I can smell the tree in the front. I can, I can hear her calling me uh, that, like a memory, and that's exactly what it feels like for me and most people when they work with spirit. Spirit, let me, let me explain it this way. Spirit stimulates our mind, our imagination, our memories, and stirs them up. Spirit told me one time in a seance, it's like this. They stick their etheric finger into your mind and they touch the neuron that has the memory they need to stimulate to get you to think about it. And that's how they bring those memories up. And that was probably symbolic, but that was the best way they could explain it. And so I want, I, this, let's do this real quick because this is a fun exercise. Uh, you guys, Andy and Debbie, you can do it with us, but especially your listeners, just close your eyes and think of i want you to visualize one thing for me real quick okay here we go a red apple imagine what it looks like imagine that glossy waxy coating around it and, and, and notice the little specks uh the little pores where air goes in and out or water goes in and out of that fruit on the skin okay now let's do this i want you to think about i want you to begin to sense um Okay, say for instance, a loved one in spirit calling your name. Like I said, my grandmother calling my name from her porch. Think of that. Okay, now what you all experienced was very faint and very wispy. Uh, uh, it's almost like your imagination was stirred. I got you to think about a red apple. I got you to think about a loved one who called your name a long time ago. And that's exactly how hard it is for us as mediums to grab that image and to grab that sound. It literally is so fleeting. If you don't grab it quick, it's almost gone. Now, we can hold on to these memories pretty quick. But when you work as a medium, a lot of times the information flows in and it's gone within a matter of seconds. And it's hard to get back to it. And so uh, that's what it's like for us when we work on a platform or when we work with clients. The, the information comes and then it goes. So have I seen spirit? Yes, but it's more of like a ghostly apparition. I can sense a... I can sense where they're at, uh, their gender. I can sense relationships. I can sense their personality style. I can sense uh, so almost like I hear, occasionally I will begin to hear, uh, what do we call them? Jingles, like television, radio show jingles, uh, Jeopardy, The Wheel of Fortune, I Love Lucy. Well, why are they doing that? Because maybe their name was Lucy. Maybe Jeopardy was the show that they identified with it drove everybody in the family crazy. They hated it. But this loved one who passed a spirit loved that show. And that's all they did was sit and watch Jeopardy all the time. And they were known as a Jeopardy fan or whatever. And those are the kind of points of evidence that I've given from a platform because those jingles have come into my mind. I don't hear it physically outside my head, but it's as though suddenly it's a memory. I can't. It's like a memory I can't get rid of. It suddenly bubbles up. And I have to acknowledge it, and then it's gone. It, 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 it's ethereal. It just kind of floats away. And uh, once I vocalize it, I can release it. It, it, it. Actually, it releases me because I don't really control it. So I would tell your listeners, when information comes, uh, whether it's visual, clair, uh, clairvoyance, whether it's me feeling the loved one's gender or their personality, that would be clairsentience. If I hear a jingle or I hear a name being called, uh, that would be my clear audience, my clear listening, my psychic, my psychic ear. 
And then we also have those a couple of others where we can psychically taste or smell things, and that will come through from time to time. You can taste the cooking or the gingerbread men that they cooked, or the you can smell the perfume or the cigarettes or the even the specific type of, of pipe tobacco, cherry flavored walnut or something weird like that. You can smell those fla flavors and they're gone. It's uncanny. It, I, I gotta laugh. It's so, it's funny, so funny because yeah. well, I can really hear myself now, Andy. Yeah, I can hear you too. Uh, Kevin, it might be on your end. Okay. All um, I have I know that all I have turned on is uh, the video camera. Everything else is muted. Okay. okay. Well, I think it's okay now. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Kevin, I I was like, first I put my hand over like this because I do my readings anywhere from a few minutes to a couple hours. And within 24 hours, I have amnesia. Yep. It is gone and i feel really bad when the people come back again and they say you remember and i'm like no no <laughs> nothing you have a better memory at all because i can't remember that long <laughs> and funny that you mentioned that tobacco because my uh my brother-in-law passed and um when you were talking about the smoke smell and i get it once in a while my mom was cigarette smoker mm -hmm. so i get that but there is that cherry tobacco, whatever it is. That mm -hmm. was what my brother-in-law always smoked in the pipe. And wow. you just like, I mean, you nailed it. I was like, oh my gosh. That was That's like, I, probably I was know it was. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So that was and, really neat. I was just like, wow. <laughs> and so basically I'll say, you know, do I see spirit people? No. I have occasionally, once in a great while, on a very special occasion, I will see what looks like the way Hollywood Hollywood shows these ethereal spirit people in rooms and things. I will see that once in a great while, but it's usually a very special occasion. It's someone's a celebration of uh, uh, like a birthday, an anniversary of somebody that I was very, very closely tied with. But other than that, no, I just get a sense of a presence. It's more energetic. And also they somehow get my attention psychically. I can feel them. So that's how I know they're around. Well, this is the thing. And I tell everyone it's there's such a variety where different people can um, see things and get messages in different ways. Absolutely. Now, I, I see, I see photographs, photographs, which is which black, is and, black white, and white or in color. And then I also see... Um, like um movies going but if i especially if i'm doing a past life but then they can talk to me people can talk to me but if i just said and i let it come in the the person forms and then i can describe that person to uh, my client or whatever so um we're gonna go ahead to do we have a sponsor andy hey, we do <laughs> We so, gotta do that. <laughs> uh, our sponsor tonight is the Checkered Lily Apothecary. <laughs> and there we go. And it's by Kimberly Boshu. Thank you, Kim. So Hi. Um, so she's got a whole line of different makeups and uh, a, a Halloween line like seance and what else does she have Debbie uh, automatic automatic writing yeah the eyeshadow it's some really got, good ones fine yeah so so we want to thank Kim for um, being our sponsor consistently we love that and providing such wonderful products for uh, our viewers, our viewers. All right. All right. Andy, Andy, do you have a list of the questions? questions? Um, Kevin, I just muted you because I think um, it's coming through your speaker. Debbie's, yeah. My so, voice. Yeah, your voice. And then I'll unmute you. Um, Well, I was thinking, Andy, you could ask him the question so that I wouldn't be hearing myself. Uh, we're oh, at gotcha. 
Okay. We have a we have a list of the frequently asked questions, and we're at number seven. Okay. So. Do spirit okay. people? Pray? <laughs> yeah. That's a good one for you to tell everybody. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and turn them on, and I'll be quiet. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So, you know, it's funny because that is a very common question that people ask at different events, like uh, afterlife forums and things that I do at libraries. And, um, you know, I have, I, I'm a little cheesy and I do like to be, a, I like to be a comedian, you know, spirit people, they don't have eyes. Uh, they don't see us with their eyeballs because they don't have eyeballs anymore. Uh, spirit, they, they recognize our awareness they recognize what we're thinking. They recognize the state of, of our being, of our what, 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 where we're at emotionally, uh, from their mind to our mind or our psychic energies. So our bodies create these fields of energy that goes out into the world of spirit, and they're aware of that we're in a private moment or we're having a difficult moment or a scared moment or a loving moment or just an everyday laissez-faire kind of moment. And so they're aware of, of, of what we're up to, if you will. You know, and so many people say, but can they still see us? You know, when we go to the bathroom, when we uh, are with our a significant other for the evening in a private way or um, in whatever condition that's private. Um, they, can, they can become aware of what's going on. But remember, when we drop the human body, our uh, our consciousness rises to a higher vibration. We're no longer attached to the labels and the, the emotions, if you will, of those private moments, right? Of having sex or being in the restroom. Those are, those are human conditions and human labels we've placed on uh, situations. Spirit could care less. So uh, don't be worried that they're looking in on you because that's not, uh, it, even if they were to be present uh, during those moments, they simply would not have the emotional attachment to it. We would, so it doesn't affect them at all. And um, they're, it, it's just not the same to them anymore. They've let go of this human state of, of worry and embarrassment and all that. So they look at things, they look at our lives from a much higher perspective and they've got better things to do with their own lives. You know, the spirit is not worried about your regularity, so they're not checking up on you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> All right. So I want to take one question from the audience. Oh, good, good. Um, and we do have a few of them, actually. So, so we, we might, might run, run off script. Go for it. Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry, I've, I've, I've got to scroll down here. No worries. Okay. This was a good one from Amanda. What is the coolest thing you have learned in your research and travels? Oh, wow. That's a huge question. You could do a whole show on that. Uh, let's say this. One of the most, two of the most amazing things I've that, well, gosh, it's even hard to limit to two things. Uh, I'll say this. I have witnessed an apport, which is an object from the spirit world of life. Uh, I have witnessed an object uh, apporting into the seance room that was a red light condition. I could see everything in the room. All the other sitters could see it. And spirit brought it through on a quantum light beam out of the medium's hand on command and it appeared on the floor in front of all of us. That was shocking. I have also experienced, I witnessed in red light condition, and that was a few years, about three years ago, the founder of my church system, Reverend F. Reed Brown, is a precipitation uh, medium. In other words, he can produce spirit writing, spirit uh, images on cards or canvas or cloth and it's done through spirit control. So spirit produces all the writing and the images 100%. No human hands produces this. And it's done through these uh, mediumistic faculties. I witnessed images appear on little three by five index cards as the light was very slowly raised by a rheostat, a little a dimmer switch. 
And as the light came up very slowly, the images phased into our dimension and precipitated in front of all of our eyes onto the cards. That was spectacular. Uh, and um, what else? Oh, I was just talking about it earlier today. I witnessed uh, the, the medium Kai Muga, uh, who is a German physical medium, a spectacular medium. I witnessed his spirit guide uh, extract his human life force out of the body in ectoplasmic form in a huge cloud on the floor. It was a concrete floor. And that cloud of ectoplasm breathed. It, moved, it breathed like a living thing. And then all of a sudden a hand came out of the out of the cloud from the direction of the concrete floor, no one around it. And uh, it, that hand even had a signet ring, which was the signet ring of the spirit control speaking through the medium while all of this is happening. That was spectacular. So those are oh, the wow. amazing things I've ever witnessed. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we've got another good question from Champagne. Okay. I have a couple of questions if possible after how can you know when the spirits who come to be channeled are good spirits and not a bad one? And her other question is, can mediumship be hereditary passed down from family member? Thank you. Okay, the sec let's go with the second one, hereditary. It's absolutely uh, hereditary, but it goes deeper than that. It's a spiritual, uh, what is the word? Um, I don't want to say spiritual contract. But we have, in, there is group karma or family karma, if you will. You come from those individuals who pass it down from, say, grandmother to granddaughter to uh, great-granddaughter and so forth. They have experienced this in other lives. And that is why it tends to run in families because the family unit karmically wants to experience intuitive abilities, psychic abilities, mediumship abilities, healing abilities, channeling abilities, whatever it may be. So you will tend to see psychic phenomena happening within family structures on earth, but it's because of spiritual principles and even past life karma. Uh, okay, so they've earned it. Uh, now, this, the first question was, how do we know the spirits that come to and communicate to us? Are they lying to us and saying that they're uh, a sheep when they're actually a wolf in sheep's clothing, if you will? Or, um, and so what I would say is this, in the Bible, because I've studied it a lot, in the Bible, Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits, okay? And so, uh, uh, and so when we look at it from that perspective and from all the seances that I've been in, when spirits come in and speak, even those that, the, that are not invited, but somehow they've made their way in, energetically into the room, they will speak through the medium or they will speak through thin air or they will speak through instruments, objects, tools, and, uh, or they may write or draw. You will know them by their fruits. Are the words, are the vibrations of their thoughts of such a, of such a vibration or frequency that it leaves you up inspired? And do you feel, wow, I feel like these are friend. They feel so friendly and they're supportive and they're giving me, it feels like really good advice and it seems very helpful. And there's your answer. That's very positive fruit. If these spirits leave you second guessing yourself, in a very negative way, doubting yourself in a, in a very harsh way. If you feel uh, a little told off, uh, well, there's your answer. If you feel that you're that you're a little scared or creeped out, something doesn't feel right. There's your answer. It tells you what kind of fruit is coming through, and so you will know them by their fruits. How does the communication? How does the phenomena? How does the experience energetically, psychically feel? And if it doesn't feel right and in your gut something's wrong, then that tells you you need to shut down the communication. They are not for you. Bless them on their way and ask them never to come back uh, uh, to speak to you or to uh, be involved with you or your group. You need to go ahead and disinvite them. Uh, and that's the best advice I can give you. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I want to check and see if you can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm not hearing the feedback, but I'm hearing it for you, Andy. That's so weird. Um, Kevin, a uh, co couple more little questions for you. Uh, do spirit people really send us signs or is that just in the Hollywood movies? 
Okay, absolutely. You know, Hollywood has played up on it. Think about this. Hollywood does play up on all these uh, these signs and these these objects and these coincidences. Why do they do that? Right? They do it because there's actually a lot of uh, fact. There's evidence to it. A lot of people are, um, a lot of people are experiencing these phenomena, if you will. And so I will tell you this: at a at a, there have been so many people that have walked through my doors, my church, talked to me privately, talked to me publicly. I've been in seances. I've been out in the public. Where I literally was just at a conference where Spirit sent a sign to my best friend in the middle of a Tony Robbins uh, uh, dance-a-thon where you're fist bumping and 3,000 people are screaming. And I'm not kidding, An app, a gold app board, uh, it was a fake gold, but it was a gold coin, appeared on the floor below my friend's feet. He was jumping up and down, and I had been staring at the floor the whole time. That coin came through, <clears throat> and that coin was from the Stanley Hotel that he had just been at the month before. And also his spirit guide had been acknowledging for two months that he has a connection to that hotel. And so isn't it interesting that they brought this sign as a gift from them to the recipient, my friend, that uh, it was just a little gift of support that uh, we want to acknowledge you. And when we asked uh, the next week in seance, uh, did you do this? And they said, well, it was really easy because all of that psychokinetic stirred up energy allowed them to literally physically apport an object into the conference room. And Tony Robbins has no clue. The spirit phenomena took place in his conference room. That's what's so crazy right next to us. And so uh, you, there are times when uh, fam I've done funerals and a few days later, uh, and even at one funeral it happened, I'll, I'll tell you this one funeral story. Uh, there was a lady who loved blue butterflies, blue butterflies, uh, uh, I can't remember the name. They might be called sulfurs, but they're really tiny, okay? And they love clay because it's full of salt and potassium and all this stuff. Anyway, these little blue, tiny blue butterflies uh, that are common here in the United States, in the southern part of the United States, they came like a what we call a kaleidoscope, a flock of these little blue butterflies hovered while I spoke at the gravesite around the casket, around the people, and the family knew that this lady who had passed, she loved those little blue butterflies. You never see them. I, I haven't seen one in years. But yet her spirit, and, and this is something to, to remember, that lady who died, quote unquote, she's not in the butterflies. She's not, uh, she's not uh, her spirit is not inside them, but her spirit mind has influenced those butterflies to actually come and be present to get you to think of her. And so she wants you to know, I'm here. Look what I sent you as a gift, as a sign. And that's what spirit says all the time. Uh, they'll send you dimes and pennies and quarters, uh, even dollar bills. They'll send you uh, crystals. I have one friend in Roanoke, her former partner, literally apports almost on a daily basis, sometimes multiple times, all kinds of hearts into her house. She has now put a goblet on her table. And I'm not joking. They literally, within hours of, of it being emptied, another one has appeared. The, uh, Spirit has apported stained glass windows into her home that have hearts in it. Bizarre stuff like that. Um, I've heard of so many things. Spirit will guide uh, insects and animals uh, to your windows, to your car, to your presence. Uh, during ceremony, during funerals, during special occasions, their birth date, their death date, anniversaries, memorial days. And why is it that your sister who loved the Red Cardinal, all of a sudden, why is it that such a skittish bird, there's multiple of them around you and it's, a, and it's her special day. It's your day to celebrate her. It's because she's guided those animals, her mind to their mind, to come and be in your presence so that you know she's alive. That is she here? Well, of course she's there because she guided those beings to come be around you. So spirit can send all kinds of signs. When you said the part about being guided, that they're being guided, I was guided because I was going to be lost once. And I told the other side, I said, you guys, you're literally going to give me signs to get me out of here. Oh, and you right. know where I need to go. The wow. first the first sign was Duncan. 
I love my it. last name. The second street I got to was Libra. I'm a Libra. Oh, and I drove, I kept driving until I found Capricorn and oh, my, my two exes were Capricorns. So I got off the road and turned right. <laughs> it took, took me right to the road I asked them to find. So uh, that was, I took pictures of that. We've talked about it on here yeah. because that was literal signs. That's beautiful. But, and that's, Lately, and, that's, and that's important because so many people forget that that spirit is those are people. They're still people. They're souls. And mm -hmm. we and it's not that we sit here and wait for them to inspire us. We can talk to them and ask them to do things for us and help us. Mm -hmm. And they want us. They want us to. That's why they're called spirit guides. They want to guide you and help. Mm -hmm. So we a lot of people forget to include them in life. Oh, and I'm all about that. <laughs> And Kevin, I was going to mention, I had, oh, and Debbie, I had something similar to that. And it was after a seance wow. here locally. And I had found out that I had, I would say, a temporary spirit guide come through mm -hmm. and was supposed to help me in my development and all that. And it came through the lead medium that was hosting the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the name was Father Francis O'Malley. Wow. And I we I Googled him afterwards and he's real. He's legit. So I did the history on that. On my way home, I took a different way home. I decided, oh, I'm gonna go this way. As I was turning right on a side street, I would never go normally. The road sign was O'Malley. Oh, brilliant. And I was like, okay, that just <laughs> the nail in the coffin there. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you know, lately, Kevin, I've had two uh, people that I know have people pass in their family. Mm -hmm. And I've heard it separately that they got birds in their house. Mm -hmm. Like bird, a bird would fly in their house. And then I heard it from another friend, a bird came in and they just thought that was the strangest thing. But I really feel like that was the family member guiding that bird in there yep. and to give them a message. And what's crazy, I've heard people say that their homes, they never open the windows and doors except to go in and out uh, of the door. And uh, they've been home all day and all of a sudden a butterfly it's, it's a day of anniversary or a passing date, or they were thinking of the, this person in spirit all day. And a butterfly that somehow uh, uh, symbolizes that person will literally fly through the living room and then disappear down the hallway. And it was a physical right. real butterfly, but it, it literally was brought in and then taken out of the house. Crazy. Kevin, I have a question for you. In the spiritualist church and we have to go back a long time people for this one we're going mm -hmm. <laughs> lots of years lots of decades they actually had like a horn a musical instrument that stuff would fall out of oh yes what I have, was that I have, about i have those in my i have them in my seance room not in this room uh those are called spiritual trumpets and you know what's amazing is there are examples in the bible where uh the prophets of old and the mediums, uh, the oracles and whatnot. There's one. It looks like a megaphone, doesn't it, Andy? And that's exactly what it does. It amplifies the spirit voices. That small end at the top is where spirit will wrap the human life force, the ectoplasmic force or that, that, that material substance extracted out of the medium. And they will create a voice box in that end. And that is where they replicate a copy of the medium's vocal cords and larynx inside that instrument. And then voices will come out the, the voice or the sound will come out the larger end to those in the room. Objects can also appear through those through that uh, trumpet. And it's only because they've uh, filled it with ectoplasm and they can transport right, right. objects through it. So I've been in seances where objects, literally huge objects, you could hear them falling from the skinny end all the way down to the big end where my hand is held open and that object could not come through the skinny end it was bigger than the big end i'm sorry it was bigger than the small end at the top there how the heck where the heck did it come from it came from spirit it came from another dimension they may have taken it off of earth into spirit to uh bring it into our location which is what they typically do uh but it is possible for objects to begin in the spirit world and enter the uh, third dimension. They've talked about that as well. 
So I love those spirit trumpets. We had a lot of stuff that happened, like the spirit photography, where they take a picture, and I think they put it in the Bible, and then yep. you go back later, and there was people in it. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and they come and they go and that was like that that's was crazy called, that's <laughs> called most likely if it's a film that's called scatography and uh, there's a lot of books written about scatography or spirit photography and um that is um let me mention this if people are interested in in strange things of religion where all this mystical phenomena i have begun to watch the most fascinating and strange documentary called finger of god and this gentleman, I'm going to track him down one day, but uh, he has gone to so many different Christian churches and uh, they're a little crazy. They seem a little out there, but they're producing manna from the Bible. Manna is falling out of the Bible. Gemstones and oil are coming out of Bibles. Uh, gold substance, which I think is not gold, but it looks like gold because there was a lady, right. a very famous lady from Florida called the gold leaf lady. Well, when they peel, it would literally materialize all over her body. They peeled it off and found it was actually brass, but it looks like gold. And in that documentary, there are uh, uh, people go to these. I don't know even what what they are, but they're ba basically ministers or who are highly prophetic. And spirit is replacing bad and broken teeth yep. with not with gold teeth. And they're wow. even, they're even getting gold dust on their clothing and on their skin. It's fascinating. Uh, and we, you know, they think we're crazy. Well, they're having the same phenomena we're having in all of our churches and our spir spiritual circles. So finger of God, go look that up. I don't know where it is, but I just yeah. sent a copy of it. Um, I'm laughing because I was thinking about that. And I, before you said the teeth, I'm going, well, we have manifesting uh, fillings and they are gold. And I'm thinking, in my head while you're talking, is it brass in their teeth or is it gold in your teeth? And then you yeah. said it. Well, we are connected. I love it. We should do a show. We are. We're on. I'm just laughing because this is like, it's just like almost too much. It's just so great. Um, I know I could talk about this stuff forever because, uh, you know, I've seen so many things and so have you and, and, mm -hmm. I totally want to know one thing, though. When the thing falls off and it materializes, does it disappear someday and go back, or do we get to keep it forever? When what falls off? Anything what? that materializes or comes out of that oh, horn or anything. It depends. Um, there, I have I have uh, friends who received apports, as we call them, object that came from one location into spirit into our seance room or into our presence. Those objects can either be destroyed by sunlight. Uh, if you uh, if you take them into sunlight immediately after a seance, they will begin to either break down or they will disappear. You'll never find them. Uh, sometimes they will stay with you for a period of days or hours or weeks or years, and suddenly they're gone when you've had them locked away and no one else lives in your home or no one knows where it's at. Suddenly it's gone. How is it gone? Because there was something energetically that was transferred from the object to you that you received, that you needed, and it it served its purpose. And because its value to spirit was more important to be used elsewhere, they removed it from your presence, and it will now be given to someone else, most likely. So I've now, heard of it's being sent. I swear that spirit takes things. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people do this because they, they believe in this because I say, where did that go? And so I'm always talking to spirit and say, can you bring, are you finished with it? Can you bring it back? Yep. But what's your take on that? Because I'm going like, seriously, where, I'm, where is this thing? You know, I'm, it's not here. I'll tell you one thing to keep, keep all the listeners from being disturbed about that one, because we, I have some incredible sacred objects that I would be heartbroken if they disappeared, if spirit took them back. But we have to look at it from a higher perspective. We receive those sacred objects for a reason, we received the energies, we received the message, whatever it was, we were blessed by their presence, but if spirit deems it necessary to remove them and then to give them to someone else who it, maybe it totally transformed someone else's life, as opposed to sitting in my drawer locked away for 40 years, not being used, if it can be used to transform someone else, wouldn't we want it to go somewhere where it will change someone's life? And that's, and so when I have objects that, 
either, I hate to say it, I've actually uh, broken a couple of my sacred objects by dropping them because I was meditating with them and I forgot they were in my lap. But uh, uh, these objects, we just have to bless them if they disappear and know that it's gone for a higher purpose for someone else. That's really the best way to look at it. Well, what I was meaning is I feel like they take sometimes everyday things. And I've read a lot of stories about people leaving their camera at home and it materializes on the bed in Europe. So, but there's a lot of times I'm going, well, I know that that pin was right there. I say, I need that. Can you bring it back when you can? And then later on I'll go and guess what? There it is. I so. I think they play with us and they still I have know they do. They have personality <laughs> and they either love to mess with us or they're really just cheeky by nature. And so they may be a little frustrating spirit or a trickster spirit that you've attracted. And Andy's and, got one. <laughs> yeah, because I've looked for uh, either car keys or something. I swear I saw them turn my head for a second, went outside, come back in. It's nowhere to be found. Go upstairs, come back. There it is. I, they'll do am it. I, they'll okay, do it. am I awake? <laughs> <laughs> they'll do it. They'll do it. Well, we are running out of time, and we're having so much fun. There was one last question, though, if you have a little bit of time. Sure, uh, sure. What can our listeners do to protect themselves from negative souls and energies? Well, I'll tell you, one of the best things that I, I say to the people that come to my church looking for help, because I, I live in South Florida, so we get a lot of African Caribbean religions and belief systems, uh, things from South America. We get a blending of, of all types of things, uh, religions. And uh, so many people uh, feel that they're troubled by negative spirits, dark energies, uh, uh, dark religions, let's just call them. And uh, one of the best things you can, let me say this, burning a sage stick, uh, I would say lighting candles, uh, shaking a chicken, throwing salt, that stuff does not work because the power is not in the tool. Do I use sage at home? Yes, I use sage all the time because sage is used to clear and clean the space. But it's, it's, um, it's, it, the intention or the power comes from us, the individual, from our mind. So say, for instance, I have a uh, negative presence around me that's affecting my life in a, in a malicious way. What I need to do is I need to uh, begin to get uh, get right with God. And I don't say that in a very Christian way. I say that we need to be connected to the divine source of all that is. And if we don't have a relationship with the a living universe, a loving universe, right there is one of the biggest, you've opened a big wide door into things that are negative and not supportive of the light of God. So you really need to find a way to enrich your life with a relationship with creator as however you see it. If you call God a woman, a man, if you call God an all-pervasive force, however you visualize God, find a relationship that strengthens your mind because that mind principle is very powerful. And then find a place of worship. If you're Christian, go be a Christian. If you're a Catholic, go be a Catholic. If you're Muslim, go be a Muslim. Find a religion that you resonate to and devote yourself 100% to it because without that devotion of even... You don't even have to be so orthodox religion, just as long as you're devoted to your learning your holy books, filling yourself with spiritual uh, channel teachings, scriptures, beautiful poetry that's religious or spiritual by nature. <coughs> you are changing your vibration to a higher vibration. There's more light of God, uh, more presence inside you. And that will ward off most everything negative and disruptive in your life. You need to be meditating every day. You need to be uh, prayerful at different times in the day. We need to pray from the vibration of gratitude. I think we forget about gratitude and we're always begging this God. Uh, I don't view God as a man or a woman. I consider God an all pervasive force that we all exist inside of. The universe is the expression of God and we're part of that universe. So we're a necessary ingredient to make this universe work. That's why we're in human form. So I recognize that I call on a higher power. I call upon archangels or, or the angels or even my, my protector team, my spirit team. Uh, and I also begin to be charitable because it's not about just me. <coughs> if I will go and be kind to my neighbors and do unto others and serve people who need food or money or my support in some way, 
I'm being charitable. I'm raising my vibration. If you don't have those elements in your life, you, honestly, you're asking for trouble because you're, you're leaving the door wide open for things to come and affect you. And the more you do that is spiritual or even religious, you will push all that back because your light grows so strong. And so it has to do with you, not the tools, not the sage, not the crystals, not your seance room. It has everything to do with you and your mindset. And it doesn't even have to do with your body. It's your mind. So it's all about what are you doing to enrich your mind, your consciousness, and fill it with that, what I call light of God or the light of truth and, and, and scripture and beautiful channel teachings and, and spiritual knowledge. And, you know, that's what you need to be doing. Oh, wow. Uh, when Amazing. you talk about intention, when I work with the energy and everything, I always tell everybody intention is everything. Yes, it is. What, you, what your intention is, is that's the power. That's there we exactly. go. That's what spirit says all the time. If, if you feel drawn to, uh, to develop as a healer and then uh, and, and, and it, it will manifest. The doors will open. The opportunities, the teachers will appear when you're ready. It's all through intention. It's all of that. Wow. I want to thank you so much, uh, Kevin, for being here. This is just the best time, isn't it, Andy? I just I love know. it. I know. I seriously have like probably uh, so many questions, but one thing I do want to do is I want to take your courses. Okay. And and if you offer anything like that, you do, don't you, Kevin? I, I have one course that's about to go live, which is okay. actually it's actually precipitation mediumship, teaching people how uh, how to unfold uh, their precipitation ability. And uh, I'm also finishing this week. We're ch we actually have a, a gentleman who's a medium. Actually, he's a prophetic medium, and he produces music and words, lyrics. He's channeling my music for my two albums, my meditation albums. Wow. Oh, wow. The album's done hopefully within the next 60 days. So those will be available. We totally want to make sure that we can help get that word out when you have courses mm -hmm. or albums. So give us the information and we will post it. And we'll talk about it on the show. And mm -hmm. hopefully at some point you'll come back on again and tell mm -hmm. us all about what you've I'm created. I'd love to, and I and I'll make sure that I give your listeners a discount that the general public doesn't have. Ooh, so that that's way, awesome. oh wow, absolutely, and that's just so that it benefits uh, your listeners, your audience, and we'll make it specific to you guys. So that'd be wonderful. I'd be thrilled to do that. Oh, that's so generous. Uh, thank you so much. You, mm -hmm. And so there's that compassion in that, in that love that Kevin's giving us for doing that and for being here. And we're so appreciative. And part of what Andy and I always talk about is being in gratitude. That mm -hmm. is yeah. manifesting. And so anyway, I think it's time to go, but we do have a show on Friday and awesome. it's a live show. We're giving away cash now, like Whoa. money. Do I have some? I should look, huh? <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh, it's an app board. Look at all those app boards. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. No, <laughs> I got cash. <laughs> oh, yes. App boards. I got to, yeah. So everybody has to manifest. Yes. Okay. You know what? We I have to get into that. I totally want to get back to where we're seeing the phenomenal, the phenomena and, and having the little gifts come. They do leave things for me. And I don't see them um, manifest, or, you know, in front of my eyes. But I'll really, really want something, and I'll be in the middle of nowhere, and then I go, Dad, thank you so much. Here it is, you know. Uh -huh. And, yeah, it's really neat. So, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And we're going to go to the lobby. So, Kevin, don't leave yet. And uh -huh. um, so everybody say bye. Bye, viewers. Thank bye. you so much. Thank you, Andy. Bye, Holly. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much.